In this video, we begin a study of chapter 28, which uh, discusses Einstein's theory of relativity. Last time we discussed the mass-energy equivalency, the mass-energy relationship. In this video, we'll discuss the concept of total energy. We sometimes say total relativistic energy. And the concept of relativistic kinetic energy. I begin by showing you an object, mass m, moving with speed v. We define a quantity symbolized as beta. It's the ratio of the two different speeds, the speed of the object to the speed of light. The total energy of that object, moving with speed v, is that ratio. Notice that when v is equal to zero, beta is equal to zero, Beta squared is zero, the parentheses is one, square root of one is one, and the total energy of that moving object, or rather to say that total energy of that object which is at rest, is mc squared. For obvious reasons, this energy mc squared is called the rest mass energy of that object. The kinetic energy of our object is the total energy shown here, this is E, minus that part of the total energy that the object possesses when it's not moving at all, when it's at rest. Any energy above and beyond the rest mass energy, mc squared, is part of the energy having to do with motion. So it's the kinetic energy. So this difference is the kinetic energy symbolized as K. Now, there is a special unit of energy that we will very commonly use throughout the remainder of this course in chapter 28, 29, 30, 31, and that is the so-called electron volt. An electron volt, symbolized as E uppercase V, is that many joules, a really very small fraction of a joule. Not a number to be memorized. That will be on your equation sheet when you take your exam. A million electron volts, abbreviated M, capital M, E, V, is a million times that much. So add 6 to the 19 and you get that amount of, ME, that amount of joules per MeV. Let's calculate the rest mass energy, MV squared, of an electron. The mass of an electron is shown here. 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Its rest mass energy is mc squared. So you have m times the speed of light squared, and you get that many joules. Let's convert that to MeV. You have mc squared equals this many joules, and now I'll divide by this conversion factor of joules per MeV. The joules unit cancels, and the MeV unit downstairs in the denominator flips upstairs here. Final result is 0 0.51 MeV. Now, consider this example problem. We have an electron. Its beta is 0.95. That means that the speed of this object is 95% of the speed of light. And we ask the question, what is that electron's total energy, E? Well, we already have seen what the total energy equation is. We can also say the total relativistic energy. It's given by this equation in the box. It's the rest mass energy, which we just found here in MeV. I'll drop the units upstairs. Divided by uh, this parentheses, square rooted. The final result is 1.33 million electron volts. We usually just say MeV instead of million electron volts. Next question. What is the kinetic energy of that electron? Well, as I said before, the kinetic energy of an object is its total energy minus that part of the energy that has to do with its energy when it's at rest. So to find the part of the 
total energy, that is just the moving part, the kinetic energy part, subtract out the rest part, the rest energy part. And so we subtract from the total energy value we have here, 1.33 MeV, it's the rest mass energy that we found is 0.51. So here's the kinetic energy equation rewritten in this form. This is a long form where all of that is E. We just found E is 1.33, subtract 0.51. Final result, the kinetic energy of our object is 0 0.82 MeV. Now, know this. This is the relativistic kinetic energy of this object. That is the actual kinetic energy of the object. There's another kinetic energy that this object has that's the wrong kinetic energy. It's a false kinetic energy. It's the so-called classical kinetic energy. Classical means from the old days. Before we knew about Einstein's theory of relativity, there was only one kind of kinetic energy, and that was the one-half mv squared that you've seen so many times. Well, the true equation for kinetic energy is the one shown here, short form, long form. Now, if the speed of your object is just a garden variety speed, normal speeds, day-to-day -day speeds that we encounter, even speeds as large as 20,000 miles per hour, then there is virtually zero difference between the calculation of the kinetic energy of an object using the classical kinetic energy equation and using the relativistic kinetic energy equation, which is shown here, short form, long form here. You can confirm this yourself by picking, well, if you have an object moving at a speed that's even 100 the speed of light, which is an extraordinarily huge speed, never to be seen on Earth except for particles as small as protons or electrons, then even at a speed of 100 the speed of light, you can calculate the classical kinetic energy, that is to say the energy, the kinetic energy using 1 half mv squared. You're used to doing that. And then calculate that kinetic energy using the relativistic expression. You'll find that the answer will differ only in the one in the ten thousandths place. On the other hand, if your speed of the object is very great, let's say a tenth the speed of light, 90% the speed of light, then there is a vast difference between the actual kinetic energy of that object, the actual one, which is the true kinetic energy, the relativistic kinetic energy, the difference between that and the classical old kinetic energy equation calculation. I'll leave it for you to look at some examples in the notes which show those contrasting situations. But for now, we're going to end this uh, lecture and move on to other content in the same chapter 28.